Hi, I'm Atty. I used to think I wasn't a reader because I pretty much just read picture books and only finish a novel once a year or so. I made this channel to remind myself that you're a reader if you read, and picture books have stories worth sharing too. Welcome to Atty Actually Does Read. I'm here reviewing another book that I borrowed from the library. Uh, I got this one not knowing really anything about it, just uh, thinking the cover looked really cool. Um, uh, and I'm going to do my normal thing of talking about it without really having any uh, script, uh, just my opinions. Okay, so first off, um, I get the impression that this book is written by someone who normally illustrates, which I feel like the description in the back um, definitely suggests that it actually doesn't mention any uh, books that she's written. It just mentions other people's books that she's illustrated. I'm particularly interested in finding her Alice's, Alice in Wonderland and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory because the art in this is amazing. I mean, it's just so beautiful. There's so many little details. Um, you know, I, I think it's really fun to have stuff like this lush uh, forest scene, but then put in, you know, pollution uh here and there, a little toy car here. There's like stories being told in the details and even the details that aren't telling stories are, you know, like, you know, putting the patterns on the plants, drawing every individual uh, part of this plant. There's a lot of books, uh, especially for kids, I think that illustrate kids doing things in nature, but then the nature just feels like hastily drawn. Uh, this is not the case. All of these are like, these are not characters on a backdrop it's a whole integrated piece on every page um, that I find so inspiring especially the illustrations of bugs uh, there's this spider grandma this ant army um, whereas this is probably my favorite page you've got uh, these beetles and slug people up here and then below you've got this little train of caterpillar people and I love everything about this. The character designs, the unique layout of these like bands of action that give this real sense of like bustle to it and discovery. Um, the, the illustrations are just amazing. Some of these plants, I don't even know what they're supposed to be, but they're still like so evocative to me and uh, very stirring. There's like a lot of stuff that's cute, but then a lot of stuff that's kind of on the creepier side too. Um, that's really great. There's this... Uh, these old ladies at one point that remind me of the brothers gruesome if anyone knows that book um but um the writing felt stiff to me um it started out well enough actually there was i, I wanted to talk about this bit in the beginning um where uh so this this one sister is like feeling bored or has art block or something and is complaining about it to the other sisters and she's talking about this feeling that she has that the other sisters this page makes clear can't relate to but then on this page it says, like, this page they're like, I don't know what you're talking about, and that's clear. And on this page they're like, hmm, maybe I do have a bit of a funny feeling too, said Carmela suddenly. She wanted to be just like her sister. And that felt so accurate to me. I I just remember that so much where, you know, like, a sibling will start playing a game and the other sibling won't be part of that game yet. And they'll be like, what are you talking about? And then they'll quickly realize that they want to be part of this and they'll be like, oh, uh, yeah, actually totally, you know, um, and start pretending along. And most of this follows, I guess, the narrative of them playing a game. But f after this, I feel like it stops having that sort of veracity to the childhood experience that that page evoked for me and um, starts becoming this thing that I've encountered in books before and is really hard for me to describe. And the best way that I can describe it is a thing that I don't really like um, is by comparing it to books that are similar but that I do like. And I have a theory as to what it is, so I'm going to present my theory. This is one of my favorite books, uh, The Big Pets by Lane Smith. And um, these books both do something similar, but I like it in The Big Pets, and I specifically don't like it in The Queen and the Cave, um, which I probably should have mentioned that title right off the bat. Um, in The Queen and the Cave, you've got this sort of meandering storyline that's just kind of where the characters, for the most part, are hopping from place to place, and um, and you're just kind of getting these, like, brief introductions to each of these things that they're encountering. Um, 
like you don't get to spend time with the spider grandmother you just get to know that she exists you don't get to spend time with this maze of ants you just get to find they exist uh and it's lines like this that particularly draw out something that i dislike about this they found a queen but not their queen and they saw how tiny beings do colossal things when working together i feel like if i were following my instincts i would want that line to be uh instead of having a line where it says oh the characters learned something amazing just uh have the reader learn something amazing and of course it'll be implied that the characters have learned that too um instead it just feels kind of tantalizing that you're saying they learned something amazing but i don't i don't feel the the oomph of that i don't feel as like i'm part of it i just get, i'm kind of getting this list of things the characters did instead of seeing them do it um but uh overall much of that is still the true about the big pets so why do i like in the big pets well there's is a narrative difference between these two books and i think it has to do with expectations that are set so in this book there's there are characters they're sort of named but the plot is always saying sometimes often it's talking about something that could happen or often happens it makes you get a sense right from the get-go that you're seeing an overview of a place rather than a narrative of something that's happening in real time. So, you know, it... sometimes they saw the small boy who rode on the back of the big dog. They waved as he headed for the bone gardens. And you get the sense that there's not saying that, that like, this is so-and-so and they were going to the bone gardens and they waved when they saw their friend. It's, it's not like a sequential thing. It's saying that when they do sometimes meet this boy, they wave as they go to the bone gardens, is the sense of this to me. Um, a little beyond that, children played at the hamster holes. It's just saying things that generally happen rather than something that's happening right in this real-time moment. This book is very much a narrative where you've got, you know, um, uh, the wonders were infinite. What wonders we don't really get to know. Franca, Carmela, and Thomasina had tea with Grandmother Spider. She told them she had 397 sons, but they were all busy trading with silk in faraway places. And now, with Franca taking the lead, Carmela and Tomasina began to grow more and more confident. The frightening became thrilling, the wild wondrous, they lost themselves in the maze of ants. This is a narrative of something that's happening right in this real moment. And I think when when that's the premise, when I know that right from the get-go, my brain starts to expect to hear to, to, to be there with the characters, to be seeing things with the sort of uh, completeness um, and depth and detail that I would experience something if i were doing it in the moment um don't tell me what like, like don't, don't tell me that they saw something amazing tell me uh something that they saw and have it be amazing to me um let me experience it with them because this narrative is making me feel like i'm supposed to be along with them otherwise it just if you if you write like that like in the moment narrative but don't provide uh details that make me feel in the moment then i just feel like i'm reading the outline of the story rather than the actual story whereas in this case you can get away with being vague in this book because you are it's very clear from the get-go that you're describing a general like a place a setting and what it's generally like and you have a sort of a sense of mysterious quiet distance from it all right from the get-go so the detail becomes enigmatic not tantalizing you know um so I guess that's my main complaint with this book. Uh, my last complaint is that you there's a kind of a thing going on in this book that I encounter mostly with movies where I, I came away asking myself, what is this book really about? Uh, it felt like it was trying to get at some sort of message, but... Um, but didn't really integrate that message very thoroughly into the book. So it wasn't, it didn't get to me through osmosis. It just was, I just got the sense that there was a message, but that it hadn't been made clear to me. Uh, and the message is something about this one older sister who's leading these other sisters on this adventure, finding this uh, other version of herself. Um, Everything made sense now. The dream, the adventure, the need to follow. She felt herself with brand new eyes. She felt a kind of funny freedom reflected back at her. She felt complete. Now she could do whatever she wanted, be whoever she wanted. Like, th this makes it clear to me that this book is about something that this character is experiencing, a, a coming of age of some sort. But I feel like that's another thing where you can show a coming of age and I can understand a coming of age, but it's not as much when you kind of say these lines that are like, and then coming of age happened. You know what I mean? Which is what these lines feel like to me. Uh, it makes me feel very distant from the story. Uh, but the pictures are gorgeous. So that's The Queen in the Cave by Julia Sarda. Uh, probably Julia Sarda, I guess. Uh, 
And uh, yeah, that's about all I got. <laughs>